Hello everyone, I'm Adam Rojas, and welcome back to another video in the Wintech USA Propel series. Today I will be covering the ability of our human machine interface, known in the industry as an HMI, to serve as a home automation operating interface. Previously I showed our HMI reading and writing data from an Arduino in order to control a robotic arm. This was handled through an RS-485 connection using Modbus protocol. However, for this project, the Modbus slave will be communicating to the HMI wirelessly. In the short intro, we demonstrated four main features applicable to home automation using our CMT3152X. These features were the IP camera, light switch control, thermostat, and lamp control. The connection process of the IP camera has been covered previously on this channel, and you can click the link in the description in order to find that video. As for the temperature display and lamp, we will be covering these in detail in today's video. To start we will be using an ESP8266 in place of an Arduino. This board can be programmed using the Arduino IDE and has an onboard Wi-Fi adapter. The ESP8266 also fits neatly onto a breadboard, which we'll use in order to connect to our temperature module and LED. The board will also be connected to a 5V WS2812B LED strip. This light strip was used to control the lamp that we saw earlier in the demonstration. We will be using a 5V 10 amp power supply to connect to the LED strip. This exact power supply is not necessary to mimic our project, all that is required is a 5V power source of some kind. Optionally, you may also purchase a Wi Fi repeater to allow the HMI to be distanced from the router while still maintaining a wireless connection. We will use EasyBuilder Pro in order to design the interface of our HMI. A key feature of EasyBuilder Pro is the ability to run an online simulation. An online simulation uses CMT Viewer that allows your computer to act as a temporary HMI. Online simulations are a great way to test the project without the need to purchase an HMI. Before we dive into the code for the project, we have left links to all the drivers and libraries used in this video in the description below. The first link will explain how to download the proper drivers for the Arduino IDE to recognize the ESP8266 as an Arduino device. The second link will be a Modbus library used for addressing registers from the ESP8266, as well as a link to the fast LED libraries that offer many uses for controlling the LED strip. And finally, the third link is a GitHub page with all the files required to mimic the project we created here today. To start with the wireless connection, I've created a project called IP Scan. This project is able to find the IP on your board and test the Wi-Fi connection. This code has many utilities such as setting the port number by changing the values here, or changing the baud rate of the serial monitor by changing the value here. The most important part of this code that you will need to configure will be the Wi-Fi login. Insert your network's name here, followed by the network's password here. After that is complete, upload your project to the board and open the serial monitor under the toolbar. Once your board is connected to the Wi-Fi, the serial monitor will print out the IP on your ESP8266. If you do not see the IP being printed, Double check the baud rate and ensure the Wi-Fi username and password is correct. We can now break down the basics of our main code used in this project. Anything circled in orange will be used for our wireless connection. This means anything that we have just previously discussed. Anything circled in green will be used for the temperature display and calculations. Anything circled in blue will be used for registering bit and register information. This code is all functions from our Modbus library. For a brief tutorial of how to use the Modbus library, the line that reads modbus.addcoil 0, false, 15 is used to add a bit register. The code reads like this. You are adding 15 coils, starting from 0x0, that will all be set to false by default. The same pattern is used for creating holding registers. It reads as modbus.add hreg 0, 1, 5. This creates five holding registers starting from 4x0 that will all be set to 1 by default. And finally, 
the code circled in red will all be functions that control our LED strip using the Fast LED library. For more specific information about the code, feel free to download the project from our GitHub page and inspect the annotations we've made in gray. Or visit the libraries directly and run the demo projects to learn more. The second board in today's video has its own code and is used to control the light switch. We did this by simply attaching a servo to the light panel that manually presses the button on and off. While this solution is not practical, it demonstrates the potential applications of this board when combined with our HMI. The code simply reads the value of a register from the HMI and prints it as a degree on the servo. This demonstration should display how objects such as blinds or lights can be automated or controlled from a central location. Moving on to our EasyBuilder Pro project, we must first configure both boards as their own Modbus device. Under a new project, select New Device, then Modbus TCP IP Zero Based Addressing. Under the Interface option, select Ethernet. Then finally, you must add the IP of your board in the section down here. The connection process of the HMI is fairly simple. While the HMI must be connected to your Wi-Fi network, we can make the HMI more mobile by using a Wi-Fi repeater. This Wi-Fi repeater can create a 2.4 GHz connection in any wall outlet. The setup of your repeater will vary by what brand you buy, however, it should take no longer than 10 minutes. In the intro, I demonstrated a feature of our CMT3152X called Touch Gestures. Touch Gestures give the ability to differentiate two or three fingers, as well as reading the direction of a swipe and the length of a tap. This feature is available on any of our HMIs with a capacitive screen. For specifics of the project we used in our demonstration, visit the GitHub link in the description below. Finally, we can test the lamp and the light switch. Thank you for watching. In this video, we demonstrated home automation applications using a CMT3152X. For more information, you can visit us at wintechusa.com or subscribe to our YouTube page, where we will cover more technical tutorials.